Hi everyone, welcome to today's presentation. My name is Adrian Hutchinson, Chief Nursing Information Officer and Manager of Clinical Technology at the Children's Hospital in Melbourne. Today I'm going to talk to you about our experience in deploying a mobile technology solution across the Royal Children's. I'd like to firstly acknowledge my colleagues at um, the RCAT and our optimization team, some of who have presented previously at this event, where they describe some of the complexities of communication in both the hospital and uh, hospital in the home settings. In fact, recent events um, so, such as COVID have really guaranteed that in and outside of hospital communication uh, will certainly be a major part of any restructuring of the healthcare system into the future. Um, so what did we want to achieve when we undertook this project? Well, really, we wanted to modernise and simplify all of our existing communication tools, some of which are um, nearly 40 years old. Uh, and we wanted to try and bring all of our um, hospital communication onto a single device. Uh, we had multiple devices across the hospital uh, as to how it was delivered. And we also wanted to... Um, uh, try and put some structure into how we communicate to ensure that communication across the hospital is precise, secure and always delivered to the right person at the right time. Some background, um, in 2016 uh, RCH went live with the Epic EMR and um, that brought us some brilliant mobile applications such as Rover and Haiku where clinicians could easily go in and review, document and even administer medications directly from a mobile device. Um, however, at the time, we didn't have a huge number of mobile devices uh, to support that application and um, this project really highlighted the need to expand our um, mobile device fleet. Um, our existing communications were really quite complex, uh, probably no different to many other hospitals around the nation. Um, but certainly we were unable to um, really support to the full extent all of the mobile applications that clinicians um, uh, had been brought to clinicians via the EMR and that clinicians were requesting to use. Secure Chat, which is a recent addition to the Epic Armoury, is really a uh, clinical um, secure messaging platform that um, is accessible by all clinicians, both in the uh, desktop version, but it's now also available in the mobile device version. And um, we certainly wanted to maximise the use of that, given that uh, it allows us to do secure messaging in clinical context of patients. Other downside of our uh, old um, communication platforms is that um, clinicians were required to carry multiple devices such as pages, voice badges, uh, VoIP phones and in some instances such as hospital in the home they had to carry all of the above plus a laptop. So it was pretty apparent that um, if uh, each on-duty clinical person didn't have a device then we weren't really ever going to be able to achieve a unified communication environment in the children's. Non-clinical communication um, messages also are a very important part of a functioning health service and um, it's a significant problem to uh, try and get uh, hospital codes and hospital notifications out to all staff, um, particularly if you're trying to achieve a, a silent hospital. Um, there were many, we soon realised there were many limitations existing platforms. Uh, they'd served us well for uh, many, many years, but um, now is the time to uh, really bring them into, uh, into line with the sophisticated EMR platform that we have. Some of the limitations that we uh, were able to realise were that, um, as mentioned, you know, people had to carry multiple devices. Uh, um, there was lack of integration between all of the different systems. Uh, roster maintenance of who was on uh, which device was certainly problematic. Certainly messages going out from switchboard, there was never any real way of tracking that message to see whether it had been received or not. Uh, and we certainly had a high amount of breakage and replacement for the devices that certainly weren't up to the current standards of um, IP rating. Um, so we set about developing a unified communications uh, vision and um, in that we were looking for all the time looking for clinical improvements. Uh, we wanted to have some staff efficiency and we also wanted to enhance patient safety. 
Um, there was an increasing requirement, as mentioned, for mobility for clinicians, and we needed to uh, be able to accommodate that. And all of that was really uh, coming back to a single device where we could plug in all of our uh, legacy applications or even new applications to ensure that we could deliver uh, all clinical and non-clinical communication to clinicians. We did have some tools with the development of the EMR and that was, uh, as I mentioned, Secure Chat and also the Medical Task Board where a nurse could go in and um, uh, put in a request to insert an IV into a patient. That task would be seen by the medical staff and they would come and uh, address that in due course. Um, we had uh, non-clinical communications as well and uh, that was uh, set out by uh, critical alerts and we were able to integrate some of the older systems into the EMR so that we could push out um, bed requests and notifications via the EMR over the paging system. But again, um, that was um, cobbled together. It worked effectively and efficiently, but we wanted to modernise the system. Certainly duress is uh, problematic in, um, less so in children's hospitals, but it still uh, can be an issue and we wanted to be able to provide each staff member with a platform uh, that if they're in duress that they um, they would be able to call for help if required and certainly from um, support services staff um, requiring to have lists and be notified of tasks that needed to be done they also needed to be taken into consideration so there are many, many um, applications and platforms that we needed to try and integrate into uh, a unified communication platform. And after analysing this, it became pretty clear that um, the modern smartphone was probably the logical way to go to be able to achieve a unified communication platform. So in um, May of 2018, we partnered with a, a company called Wavelink that um, after reviewing multiple devices for all of the criteria that we were looking for in a device, we um, engaged Wavelink because their device appeared to have all of the required um, specifications that we needed. And we looked at pretty well every single device on the market and this one came out as um, the one most likely to be able to do uh, the job that we needed it to do. So in 2018, we set about a trial in our Koala Ward, which is a um, cardiac step down unit. It's high acuity. It had a very tech savvy unit manager at the time and um, uh, very committed to using uh, electronic systems to enhance patient safety and improve documentation. So um, we introduced 13 handsets into that environment and uh, to ensure that each staff member on those ships were able to um, uh, use a device. The um, types of specifications, well, the specifications that we really came up with for the device um, based on all of our previous experience was that it needed to be droppable. It certainly needed to be waterproof given some of the issues that we'd had with some of our old devices. Uh, infection control standards were pretty high, so this had to be chemically resistant um, and able to be uh, washed with pretty well any industrial agent and uh, still preserve um, uh, the screen and the backing of the, of the device. It required to have an inbuilt barcode scanner, particularly for nursing services where we're required to administer medication and barcode medication to patients via their ID band. It had to be supported uh, be able to support the uh, EMR applications such as Haiku and Rover and um, currently uh, um, Epic only support um, Android and uh, iOS operating systems and uh, these devices have an Android operating system. We needed to be able to deliver a paging uh, to these devices and uh, we certainly were aware of um, applications that would accept paging messages so, so again that ticked another box these devices have um, uh, uh, duress functionality as well so there's a programmable button and um, when we get around to it and we've rolled all of the devices out we'll start looking at a duress application that can notify our code gray team of any internal or external duress. And there's a number of apps out on the market that um, we'll probably look to explore. 
VoIP communication across the hospital is extremely important and um, all of these devices could be um, uh, uh, enrolled with a, an extension number on our um, Cisco platform uh, within the hospital. And as an added redundancy, we wanted to try and make sure that we had some sort of network redundancy and all devices were capable of uh, supporting uh, mobile phone connectivity. Um, so these devices were rolled out and we put them on an MDM which allowed us to manage them remotely. We created a profile for those devices and um, applied a, an, an internal extension number to enable each staff member to be able to communicate with one another. Um, we had pushed the talk functionality for a period of time and uh, really these devices only took a couple of hours of training uh, for people to become expert in uh, using them. The devices were a terrific success and really informed much of the information that we would require for our hospital rollout. They appeared to meet all of the criteria that we needed. So we pretty quickly got on to um, trying to generate, this is a project called the Unified Communication Project. Uh, this was not an insignificant project across the hospital where we're trying to convert everyone onto a single platform and consolidate all of the existing devices into one device that can receive many applications. We asked for the generous assistance from our um, RCH Foundation uh, in order to support this as a uh, embedding a new technology and a new platform into the hospital that would um, see us uh, for many, many uh, years to come. We always saw it as a transition project um, as we were moving away from existing devices. So we had to take a gentle approach uh, to ensure that we could preserve messaging. Uh, it's not a project that you can do as a big bang approach. It was really required to support nursing, medical, allied health and also support services. And as mentioned previously, we uh, manage all of the devices centrally through an MDM solution called SOTI. So we were going essentially from greater than 3,500 devices across the hospital. And uh, after our analysis, we believed that we could, eight, about 850 devices would support um, uh, messaging to people on the floor at any given time. And this includes medical, nursing, allied health and some support staff. We were able to um, generate our own profiles and you'll see the um, image on the right of the phone that we pushed that profile to the phone and that pretty well had all of the applications that um, uh, clinicians would need uh, to perform their tasks day to day. And we've been able to successfully um, push out messaging, um, enroll the VoIP, um, phone through BizPhone and staff, both medical and nursing staff, can now use the EPIC application for Rover and Haiku to document via the EMR. So the current progress is that we're about 84, 80 to 85 percent um, completed of the device configurations and deployment. A little bit of a hold up um, looking to solve some paging diversion issues but we should be able to come up with a solution to that pretty quickly. As mentioned, we pushed out various profiles to different craft groups. Um, again, a slow approach uh, is probably a better approach and COVID has been beneficial in that respect in that it's made us slow down and um, support individual departments uh, to be able to get them to use the different applications on the device uh, whilst preserving existing messaging. Um, uh, as mentioned, we're currently diverting uh, paging uh, through to the messaging app and uh, ensuring that people get the messages that are generated from the legacy systems. So a slow approach uh, allows us to solve problems as they arrive. We have had some challenges. COVID uh, was problematic in that we, when first deployed, we couldn't have many staff to assist uh, in deploying the devices. Um, the complexity of messaging was a bit of a spaghetti across the hospital that um, I'm sure many other hospitals will need to untangle if they take this project on. Um, and we had to have a gentle approach to staff transitioning to a new way of communications. We can all become very um, 
uh, accustomed to uh, a way in which we do things, but the long-term um, viability of those solutions uh, was really never going to serve us well into the future. So we viewed it as a significant change management issue, given that the technology is relatively uh, ubiquitous and well-known and, and uh, well used around, um, even in, in a personal uh, device sense. So where to from here? So we hope to complete the rollout in early 2021, and then we look to evaluate. We hope to find out any bugs that we have. We hope to have everyone embedded into using a different platform for clinical and non-clinical communication, uh, and then we'll evaluate, and then we'll publish uh, the results from that evaluation. So just in summary, um, the EMR certainly has been a catalyst um, that really provoked us to review any of the tools that we work with and wonder how we can work smarter and better. And uh, clinical communications is really one of those projects that has been um, uh, uh, triggered from us using the EMR and certainly working better and more efficiently. And, um, you know, to be reassured that transition to a single platform, it, although it's complex, it certainly can be done and um, it can be done with a contemporary platform and certainly contemporary devices. So thanks for listening um, and I'm happy to take any questions at the end. Thank you.